Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22, verse. As a matter of fact, let's go. Yeah, Job chapter 22, verse. Let's go to verse 21. It says, acquaint now thyself with the Lord and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Uh, acquaint not thyself with the Lord and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Now this is dealing with your consciousness. This is dealing with your mentality. Acquainting now thyself with God is, is you taking on the image of God. And letting the spirit of God sculpture how you think. As a man think in his heart, so is he. I think that's Proverbs chapter 23. Acquaint now thyself. Now that means to become God's acquaintance. Now, when, when, when you are an acquaintance with God, you are his friend. And we know that the friendship causes you to obey his commandments. So when we look at this text, we are seeing the power of acquainting yourself with the Lord. You be at peace. That's the location. So wholeness. That's the start of wholeness and wellness and victory and restoration. You first have to acquaint now yourself with him. You can't acquaint yourself with your biological dad. Your biological brother. Your biological cousin. You can't acquaint yourself with the last person that made a mistake in front of you. Now you're talking about they did it, so it's okay for me. You can't be acquainting yourself with individuals that are not God. You acquaint yourself with him. You know, I'm a man just like any other man. So, you know, we're going to experience this and we're going to have to, uh, some of us, we're going to make the decision like this. No, 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 no. We're not acquainting ourselves with another man. We're acquainting ourselves with him. The Lord Jesus. And then it says you, you're going to be at peace. So peace is a location. When you're at peace, you don't let your soul entertain strife, gossip, bitterness, resentment, distraction, temptation, fear, anxiety, worry because you're at the location of peace peace is an anointing it's a grace and it's a glory and it causes every plan of God to start coming towards you when you're in this location you in position to receive every delivery from God being at peace means being at The garment of Jesus is clothing you. It's covering you. You are in the wellness stream of God. And that's mental. It becomes physical. It becomes financial. It becomes uh, re relationshipable. I know that's not a word, but I made it up. It's a word now. Re relationshipable. <laughs> Thereby good shall come unto thee. Your inward image of God flowing inside of you allows goodness to come unto you. Now, saints, let me just tell you something. What is the main thing that God is? He's a sower. You could say that he's a father, but fathering is sowing mentorship. A father sows mentorship to his child. You could say that he's a healer, but he sows healing. You can say that he's a teacher, but he sows the word. You can say that he's a provider, but he sows provision. You can say that he's a counselor, but he sows comfort. So the main image of God is sower. That's what he is. 
So for you to acquaint yourself with the Lord, you got to acquaint yourself with sowing. You got to recognize that you are a sower. Now look at this here. Thereby good shall come unto thee. You got to recognize that when you become a sower, good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto thee. Now let's go forward. Let's go to uh, verse 22. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth. So God's mouth gives you a law. So he, he gives you a rule that you could practically walk out in your decisions and choices. And if you do so, this will cause manifestation. Results. Harvest. Appearances. Visitations. Inhabitations. Inheritance. And lay up his words in thine heart. Let's go to verse 23. If thou return to the almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Look at the word of God. If thou return to the almighty. Now let's deal with this. I know some of y'all never heard this before. But almighty means that all of the spirit of might and every ability of might is engrafted in him. He is the definition of all might. That means that every level of strength that could be accessed, believed for, or discovered is possessed by him. Might is an ability of strength to overcome every obstacle, blockage, hindrance, enemy, adversary, darkness, demon, disobedience, witchcraft, dark. Look what it say. Return to the almighty. Now watch this. Where did you go? If it says return. The only way you could go from the almighty is into all sin. See, there's two different realms. The almighty, then all sin. So if you don't stick with the almighty, you got to go into all sin. Le caraza la galiono. Ha ya 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 ya. So it says return to the Almighty. Because you're in the realm of all sin. And when you turn to the Almighty, He ministers all levels of might. So you become strong. So you ain't got to sin. Because when all might is imparted to you, you don't have any deficiencies in your soul. Your soul is a recipient and a participant and a, 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 a partaker of the divine nature of all of his mightiness. All of his might is flowing in your soul. Where's the defect? Because all of his might is flowing in your soul. Might is every dimension of power. Might is every dimension of dominion. The almighty means that every level of overcoming, he reveals it to you. He gives it to you and lets you wear it. Abilities are in you, but they are also on you. I have a teaching anointed in me, but I have a teaching anointed on me. I have a healing anointing in me, but I have a healing anointing on me. I have a wealth anointing in me, but I have a wealth anointing on me. The Holy Ghost is in Prophet Joshua Holmes, and the Holy Ghost is on Prophet Joshua Holmes. Whatever God places in you, it also comes upon you. That's why I could speak in tongues. Le cariza, gronzo, vi, caranze, levi, cleanzio. Lipa carananze, liquidionzo. Kazaka ala caraso locovia. And I could immediately discover the rivers that I already have in me. But while I'm praying in tongues, it's on me. That ability that's in me now is on me. Because I took my physical body 
to pray in the spirit and in the spirit is inside of me. So when I take what's on the outside of me, which is my body, and I pray in the spirit, what's inside of me comes outside on me. It comes upon me. I take it from within and I pit it without. Tongues is grabbing your inner man and placing it on your outer man. Your inner man is rich. Your inner man a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire. Your, your inner man is money cometh. Your inner man is wealth. Your inner man is a reaper. Your inner man reap harvests. So your inner man be looking at your outer man like, girl, you tripping. Shit. I, I, ain't, I, ain't come, I ain't come here and live like this. You better get it together. You better start sawing. Man, you tripping. You, you know that you was created as a man to sow your way out? You tripping, man. What, what's up with you? You up here just going to let your life go past you like this? You're not going to take authority? The kingdom of God suffered violence. You ain't going to take it by force? And the body take it by force? You ain't going to take it by force? Your spirit, man, be looking at you like, when you going to let me come on the outside? Now, saints, there's a mystery when the word of God say that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. I'm about to get off here in two minutes. God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. That means that God has dealt to every man the measure of himself. God is faith. Jesus is faith. The, the Holy Ghost is faith. When the words say that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith, he has given every man the measure of himself. People go to hell because they took the measure of God and used it for the God of this age. The measure of faith that you've been given was for you to tap into sowing and for you to tap into reaping. Life is all about sowing and reaping. The Bible said you're going to reap what you sow. So that's going to be the totality of your life. Your life going to look like what you're reaping. Your life is going to look like what you're reaping. So it's really important that you receive a sowing anointing so you can know what to sow. Even when you're in a conversation with a person, you got to know which words to sow in that conversation. Sometimes talking to somebody and say, God about to give you a miracle, that's not a good Seed to sow. Because if they're cursing God with their life, they need to hear that, that, that death is waiting for you. You, you. you don't know how long you're going to live. And if you, this path that you're on ends up in death. Escape. Even in conversations, you got to know what seed to sow. Life is all about sowing. You got to know what reaction to sow. David knew what to sow to Saul. Not a sword, but submission. David didn't sow a sword. He sowed submission. He sowed a rock at Goliath and killed him. He took out his sword and slaughtered the Philistines. But when it came to Saul, he calmed himself down. He knew who he was talking to. I remember years ago, I was sitting down with uh, Dr. Mike Murdoch. We was on a white couch. And uh, he was writing a book, Vashti Doesn't Live Here Anymore. And while he was on the book, he, he came out with a teaching. And I was there when he started the teaching. And he actually had looked over at me. And he said, I'm going to do a teaching on, do you know who you're talking to? And he began to talk to me and tell me how people don't know who they're talking to. You can't talk to everybody the same. Those little children... I know they disrespected their parents. They disrespected their parents, but when they disrespected Elisha, two she bears came out. 
Do you know who you're talking to? Do you know who you're talking to? Do you? I want to add on to what he said. Don't get that twisted. <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? Sometimes people lie to you. Do you know who you're talking to? You got to know what to sow in a conversation. I'm about to get off here in two minutes. Look where it says, uh, pit iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Your tabernacles is you. You are your own tabernacle. It's a pit iniquity far from it. That means stop taking the body to do stuff that you know is wrong. Watch this in verse 24. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. Now saints, there's a lot of stones around the brooks. There are innumerable stones around the brook, brooks. So when it says that you shall have the gold of Ophir, which is a rich location, as the stones of the brooks. Now, let, let me give you a revelation of Ophir. Ophir, O, O, Ophir, is a location where God releases wealth. It's a location where God releases his power for you to get the upper hand in substance. No longer are you underneath substance abuse. Ophir is a dimension of plenty of provision. It's a dimension. It is a portal where God will give unto you everything that you desire. It is God empowering you with his financial power. He's giving you all on your head for money. You listening to me right now, there's all on your head that you can't see. Stop getting it twisted, baby girl, baby boy, because all the money that you making in this life is because there is an offer dimension on you Shh. you 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 think that your boss just paying you and people just giving you money there's an offer dimension on you but what you need to catch that if you be a steward this offer realm will explode it won't just be one stream of money coming to you It'll be streams of money. It'll be channels of money. It'll be avenues of money, roads of money, portals of money, provisional miracles coming back to back. Finances moving, money moving, increase moving, wealth moving. The money bags of King Jesus will keep on coming because he'll take you from one dimensional offer and take you to the next place of offer. It says, then thou shalt lay up gold as dust. Dust is innumerable. Saints, if you was able to count the amount of dust in your apartment, you'll be shocked. If you was able to count the amount of dust in your bedroom, you'll be shocked. There's dust all around you, even when you can't see it. Dust accumulate in the zillions and the billions. Saints, right now, it don't matter where you live. You could be in a hotel room, a hospital bed, a, a shelter. There is zillions, unlimited amounts of dust where you are. The Bible said that thou shalt lay up gold as dust. That's insane amounts of money. That's bizarre billionaire status. Bizarre. That's bizarre blessings. That's bizarre finances. Shocking. Huh? Thou shalt lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Watch this here. Look at verse 25. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Look what it says. The Almighty shall be thy defense. But if we hop over to Ecclesiastes, it says that money is a defense. 
So when it says that the almighty shall be your defense and money is a defense, the almighty is money. <sighs> money cometh to me now. Money cometh to me now. Money cometh to me now. It says the Almighty shall be thy defense. Well, the Bible also said that money is your defense. Then in Psalm 512, in Ecclesiastes, Psalm 512 say that favor shall be your defense. So what you got to catch is that the Almighty is favor. The Almighty is money. So, so saints, what you got to catch is even when God ministers seed for you to sow, it's really Jesus ministering himself to you in the form of paper. Ha! He ministering to you himself in the form of a $20 bill, a $100 bill, a $40, a $60, a $80, a $5, a $10. It is really Jesus immersing himself in the image of money and he coming into your life and he looking at you, you looking at him and you pitting him at Louis Vuitton and he like, no, nah, baby, I ain't come to go to Louis Vuitton yet. You got a future with Louis Vuitton, but right now I need you to come into my kingdom. Right now, I need you to sit at my feet. Right now, I need you to sit in my glory. I need you to sit in my story. Right now, I need you to help me to get from village to village, city to city, state to state, right now. See, some of y'all don't catch that. When God put that money in your head, that's Jesus. Jesus ministered seed to the soil, but even the money that you see, that seed that you see, he inside of that seed. And he looking at you, you looking at him, and he waited to blow your life off. He ready to take the roof off and let the financial blessings sit on you. He ready to show out and give you an experience with his multiplication power. What God going to multiply if you ain't so nothing? What God going to multiply? You think that he multiplying your prayer? That ain't nowhere in the scripture. The Bible say he multiplied the seed sown. Because when he gave you the seed, he was really in that seed and he camouflaged himself and appeared to you in the form of money. Jesus appears to you in the form of money. And when you become a sower, you are sowing Jesus. That's why Jesus come back after three days, just like he did and resurrects with a harvest and comes back into your life with a bigger and greater move of his spirit and kingdom power. Every time you sow, you're sowing Jesus. And Jesus didn't stay in the ground. Jesus came out the ground. So every time you're sowing seed, he coming back. Stop worrying and believe God. Don't be no sissy up in here. Stop crying and whimpering. Wake up and receive this glory of God in the last day. Holy Ghost looking for somebody he can move through. Holy Ghost looking through somebody he could improve and walk in and, 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 and upgrade and elevate. He looking for somebody. Is it, is it somebody up in here? Do you want a future? Well, let's turn off the lights because I'm looking for them. The Almighty shall be thy defense, and thou shalt have plenty of silver. Hear the word of God saying that you're going to have plenty of money. This shocking. What? The word of God said that you're going to have plenty of money? The Bible said that you're going to have plenty of money. 
The sower must recognize that the money that's leaving you is way smaller than the money coming to you. Somebody write that down. Somebody write that down. Somebody need to recognize, the sower must recognize that the money coming to you is, the money that's leaving from you is way smaller than the money coming to you. The money leaving from you is way smaller than the money coming to you. 